Hello everyone, this is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com for your November 19th report that you can use for November 20th stock market session. First off, I want to start off with the S&P 500 and I want to get in a little bit closer so we can look real close. As you can see, the rally attempt on the S&P 500 started over on 1113 as the intraday lows of 818 pierced the intraday lows that we saw here of 846, 839, and 845. So that piercing of the lows there started the rally attempt over again. But as you can see, after the two low volume pullbacks and then the nice little reversal bounce yesterday, we have re-hit new lows on the S&P 500 today as the market, market sold off all the way from the open to the close, closing almost near the low of the day with the S&P 500 losing 6%. The thing is, is that somebody did ask if this was capitulation. Fair question, but it was not capitulation. There was not high enough volume. You would have needed to seen a much bigger down day on much stronger volume. And later on, I will show you a stock I am personally short that I'm taking 50% off because it did have a capitulation day. And I'll show you that day and that day will be what you need to look for for a possible capitulation. Now the S&P 500 since the start of the year while I'm very upset with myself that I have an account down 7% I need to realize that this index is down 45% this year and from the highs in October it's down 48% so it's down 48% from the highs in October, while an account that I received in November is down 7%. So I guess it's not that bad. And with the 30% gain, I guess I can't complain too much. I'm going to go to the NASDAQ 100. And as you can see, more new lows by quite a, by quite a bit. It, it did close at the low of the day after almost opening near its high of the day, but moving up 13 points before reversing closing at its low of the day. And the NASDAQ 100, since its high in November, is down 51%. It's down 51%, while my worst account is down 7.4%. I like to use that instead of the count that's up 35%. Because being down really bothers me. This will be the first year ever, ever, since 1996, because I started by breakouts immediately, and I read how to make money in how to make money in stocks in 1997. So I immediately started to make money buying breakouts because I happened to fall, to read a book about that in 1997. And in 96, I read I looked at AOL and I Omega, and I realized that what moved higher was good. But however, I wasn't buying breakouts as so much as after something would break out, it would pull back, bounce on the 50-day moving average, and I would buy it. So so I have always been making money. I got lucky when I started off. I read the right book and I learned very fast. And anybody that's a subscriber will tell you I'm very fast at picking up things in the market. And, it, and I'm very right a lot. And when I'm wrong, I'm not wrong that much. And I'm wrong very little. And that's been like this since I started my blog in 2005. And it's been like this since 1999. But even when I started out, I got lucky. So it, it really bothers me to be down. But I got to realize NASDAQ 100 is down 51% since November, 47% since the start of the year, and we're still not done with the selling because as you can clearly see via the volume today, today's not capitulation. And let's look at his brother, the NASDAQ. Same thing. There's no capitulation there. And as you can see from the highs in October to now, we are down 51% also on the NASDAQ. And now let's look at the S&P 600 as we make new lows here. And we can see from the highs in October, the S&P 600 is down 49%. And as you can see with it going to new lows today, it's just everything is hitting new lows. There's only one index not hitting new lows. Look at the Russell 2000 down 7.85% today. And that gives it a total loss from its October high of 51%, 50 50.92. The best index, of course, is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Since its high in October... It is down only 43%, which matches Kramer. So th that's why you see the Dow Jones Industrial Average going into a new high relative strength-wise. I would love 
to see my personal account that's up 35% or the other one that's up 21% or the one that's down 2% or the one that's down 7% and see, I don't know how much my IRA is, so I'm not going to include that one, and see how it looks like compared to this and see what my relative strength line would look like. It'd probably look like 80Y, as you can see here. But the Dow Jones Industrial Average is by far the strongest, and it still is holding the lows. But the Dow Jones Industrial Average is not... Uh, uh, the kind of index that leads bull markets. So there is no way that we are about to turn and we should continue to go lower because the big cap indexes are leading. And as long as the big cap indexes are leading, there is just no way that it's going to be any time to go long because tech stocks and small cap stocks will be taking over by then. Now, let's go ahead, now that we know that we don't have capitulation, let's look at the VIX. And as you can see, the VIX is closing at 74.26, which is a round where it closed at 79.13 last time when it almost hit 90. And that means that we haven't, you know, seen capitulation yet because the VIX is probably going to have to hit 90 to 100 to God knows how high before we probably do capitulate. So the VIX is moving higher again, holding that 50-day moving average, which shows there's a ton of fear in this market. And today, I was reading a lot of the new amateur investors and money managers over at realmoney.com's headlines as I'd no longer subscribe after being a subscriber from 1999 to 2007, or actually 2008 when I started to work for them. It's just a horrible website now. Let's take a look at their stock. $2.98. So it closes low a day. It's below $3 again. So as you can see, things aren't going very well there. So this market, you can see that there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of panic in there. I need to see what the put call looks like in the IBD index, but until that thing hits 1.5 to 2, there's no way it'll be done. Let's see what the U.S. dollar did today. It continues its strength, and that makes me happy because I'm in cash, and being long like 80 to 90 percent cash is good to see it up 17.6 percent since it took the 50 200 day moving average and since it broke out of the flag pattern it's up 1.85 percent so the flag pattern has worked the breakout is working the dollar closed near its high of the day it has another bullish candlestick pattern and it looks good ever since it's taken out the 250 day moving average now let's look at gold gold did not have a great session but it's still in this consolidation area sorry i just had a brain fart there and as it stays in this consolidation area we're looking for a breakout to the either the upside or the downside and history shows once a trend is in motion low lower lows that normally the trend stays in motion so it should be lower lows next now let's go look at oil 5362 at levels not seen since 2007 January and there's January 12 2007 if you went long oil there one year later you're up a whole one percent and if you went long oil around 150 thinking it was going to go to 200 you're now down 62 percent so there's that so oil is going to a level that's almost going to act like a tax cut to the consumers if it can hit 38 I'll be happy that means gas will get to under three dollars on Maui maybe and I know in the rest of the country, it'll probably hit $1.50. So that'll be really good. Let's see. Is there any other index I want to look at? I don't believe there's anything else I want to show except for the Chinese stock market index. I do want to take a look at that. As you can see, everybody was upset about yesterday's 6.3% loss on strong, strong volume. What they failed to even talk to me about until I saw it is that there was a baby tail. And we're still holding up above the follow-through day which I need to go back out just to see where it is here. And we're holding up above the big, huge volume up day here. So since we were still up 1% since the big, huge up day, it was nice to see us almost take back, get back all of the gains and close near the high of the day on the session. So since the follow through day, the market on the Chinese index is still up 15%. This is where your leading stocks are going to probably be at next bull market. Because as you can see, after an extremely long downtrend that saw the Chinese stock market lose 72%, Unlike all the other times when the when it seemed to be more V-ish, 
V-ish here, V-ish there, very V-ish there. It's now rounding out. And as you can see on like a Bloomberg chart or another chart like CNBC where you can see volume, you will see on the up days volume is very strong. I don't know what it is today, but I know that I like the way that this index looks since putting in the follow through day in November. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. This is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com saying aloha.